In this demo, I will um, introduce you to MDT 2010 Light Touch. I will basically create a small deployment solution in about 10 minutes. So what we will do is about three things. We will create a deployment chair. We will import the setup files and a few applications. We will configure the deployment settings and actually then start the uh, deployment of a client. So let's go into the demo. This is the deployment workbench, the main UI for managing uh, MDT 2010. So I'm going to start by creating a deployment chair. I will create a folder, MDT demo. I will share it as MDT demo. And I will give it a description MDT demo. These settings I will just leave as default because we are going to override them later on anyway. So. I'm just clicking next through this one. Now, when I have a deployment share, I can start adding content to it. So I will first go ahead and import an operating system. So I'm going to create a folder in here, Windows 7. And I will now right click that folder and say import. And then I will point it to a path where I have copied the Windows 7 DVD. So I set full set of source files. I will go into my MDT source folder, OS, and in this folder I have a copy of Windows 7. And I'm going to select to move the files because it's quicker because I'm doing this on the same volume. I will give it a better name, a more descriptive name and click finish. After importing I normally rename this one because I don't like the default name so I prefer to have it like this. Then I'm going to add an application. So I'm going to create a folder called Line of Business Applications. And I'm going to add in the um, Acrobat Reader. Adobe Reader version 9. I will point it to a source folder for that application. And the command line, well, for Acrobat Reader, it's uh, not just set up xc-s, it's more complicated than that. So I will just paste in a command line I have for Acrobat Reader. And now I have added an application. Now if I wanted to, I can also at this point inject drivers, but we're going to deal with that later, so I'll leave it for now. What I now need to do is to create a sequence. So I will create a folder in here, Windows 7, and I will create a task sequence. Give it an ID and a name, standard template, I will select my Windows 7 OS that I added, I don't need a product key, it's an enterprise version. I have a KMS server. Type in some information. Type in a password for the admin account. And I will create my sequence. Now, if we go into this sequence, this is basically the to-do list when I start a deployment. When I hit F12 on a machine or start from a boot media, this sequence contains all the actions that are going to happen during the deployment. So for example, there will be one step that will format and peti petition the drive for me. There will be another step that will inject the drivers. That will be uh, yet another step adding the OS image to the disk. Later after that, there will be a step running Windows Update, if I enable this, and install all my applications. So basically this is your old checklist that you may have had on paper before but now it's a living document inside the deployment solution. So I will just leave it as default right now. After adding the OS and the app and creating the sequence, I need to update my deployment chair. By doing that I will actually create my boot images needed to start the deployment. So let me go ahead and click update and finish this wizard.
Now the update is completed, so I will click finish. Now, after doing the update, if I go to the file system, if I go to my demo deployment chair, if I go to my boot folder, I can now see the different boot images in here. The ISO files we can burn to a CD or just use SAS in a VM. But I'm going to start a client now on the Light Touch ISO. Now I'm booting a machine on the Light Touch ISO file that was created in the boot folder. And I will now see the default behavior of the deployment wizard um, in MDT 2010 Light Touch. And as you will see, there will be quite many screens to actually select from. This is the welcome wizard, so I will click run. I will have to log in with an account that actually has the permissions to read that deployment chair. I have to select my sequence, give it a computer name, select whether to join a workgroup or a domain. If I have any previous backup, I can restore that now. Language settings, keyboard, time zone, the Acrobat Reader application, if I want BitLocker or not. And now a quick summary, and when I hit begin, now the installation will actually start. Now the sequence will run through all the different actions, and in this case deploy Windows 7 and install Acrobat Reader uh, in the very end. But what if you don't want to automate some of these items um, in the wizard. Well, basically what we have to do is go back to the server. So I'm back on the server. I have to right click the um, deployment chair. I have to go to rules. And first, if I want to uh, suppress the initial wizard, I have to go to bootstrap and actually add skip BDD welcome and set it to yes in this file. And since this file is actually on the boot image itself, I do need to do an update of the deployment chair after changing this value. I can also customize the wizard itself by changing the things in the rules in here. Let's go ahead and do that. So now you can see I have pasted in a few more rules. So for example, I'm now setting the org name to deploy instead of IT organization. I'm also configuring it to not ask for time zone, but to ask for applications. Because if you look further down, you can actually see I'm setting the time zone value and the time zone name needed for Windows 7. And you can also see I actually configure it to join the domain for me. I'm also configuring to use a local WSS server for patching. So basically, I'm just changing a few values in the rules. I will hit OK. And since I did some changes to the bootstrap ini, I have to update this one again to make sure that the boot image is reflecting that update. Now the update is completed, so I will click Finish. And I will now start the client again on this boot image. So I'm booting the client again. But since I have updated the bootstrap in the file and also some of the rules on the server, I will get a different experience this time when running through the wizard. Since I added the skip BDD welcome equals yes, I don't see the initial welcome screen. It takes me directly to the login. And if I would like to, I could actually automate this one as well. I will log in. This time I will get fewer options in the wizard because I have configured the rules to actually suppress some of the screens. I also provided some values for them on the server. So I will select the sequence. I will assign a computer name. I will select the application. And that's it. As you can see, by simply changing a few of the rules on the server side, I'm changing the behavior of the client wizard.